Welcome to my channel. I really appreciate you coming to my channel and supporting me. And I'm very thankful for the comments and for all the nice things that you say about me and for all the wonderful people that are on my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. The first item that I have is entitled Nonprofits Are Making Billions Off the Border Crisis. I've just highlighted a little bit of this and I want to read it to you, but it's, it's stunning to me. <clears throat> the Free Press examined three of the most prominent NGOs that have benefited. Global Refuge benefited from the uh, invasion at the southern border. Global Refuge, Southwest Key Programs, and Endeavors, Inc. These organizations have seen their combined revenue grow from $597 million in 2019 to an astonishing $2 billion by 2022, the last year for which federal disclosure documents are available. So you know it's more in 2024. And the CEOs of all three nonprofits reap more than $500,000 each in annual compensation, with one of them, the chief executive of Southwest Key, making more than a million dollars. That's a million dollars of your tax money if you're an American. Some of the services NGOs provide are eyebrow raising. For example, Endeavors uses taxpayer funds to offer migrant children pet therapy, horticultural therapy, and music therapy. In 2021 alone, Endeavors paid Chrissy Merrill, a music therapist, $533,000. An internal Endeavors PowerPoint obtained by America First Legal, an outfit founded by former Trump aide Stephen Miller, showed that the nonprofit conducted 1,656 people plant interactions and 287 pet therapy sessions between April 2021 and March 2023. Endeavor's 2022 federal disclosure form also shows that it paid $5 million to a company to provide fill-in doctors and nurses, $4.6 million for consulting services, and $1.4 million to attend conferences, and $700,000 on lobbyists. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. These people exist because they're getting federal funds. That's their sole source of income, federal funds. And they pay lobbyists to get more federal funds. In other words, they're using our tax dollars to lobby Congress to get more of our tax dollars. You can't make this stuff up, folks. I'm going to tell you what's behind all this, and, and it's going to stay this way until the American people fix it by electing people who will not put up with this stuff. The larger that a government gets, the more that the government is willing to waste. They begin to think that the money is theirs, not ours. That's the reason why we need a small federal government and a decent sized state government and a robust local government because the local government answers directly to you and I, the people. The state and the federal governments don't answer to us as directly because they are Republican and I mean by that I don't mean Republican Democrat, I mean constitutional republic, Republican. They are Republican forms of government and therefore they represent us, but not directly. But at the local level, they represent us directly. And so we have a lot more impact because there's less people voting for them and therefore every vote is more important. But when you get all the money that's being drawn in from all over the country with tax money and you put it into Washington, D.C., then when it comes back out, it comes back out to satisfy what's going on in Washington, not what's going on in your local area. 
And with lobbyists, it goes to the people that are lobbying the best. So that's article number one. Article number two, more Republicans betray the causes they supported 10 minutes ago. I've talked about this before, and I know some people think that I'm probably a Republican, but I'm not. And I've said it many, many times, there's not a dime's worth of difference between Republicans and Democrats. Not a single dime. They're both exactly the same. One of the prior GOP objections to FISA was that it was used in monitoring January 6th attendees. Turner and a new group of House Republicans that include Speaker Mike Johnson got Republicans fully back on the warrantless surveillance train using images of screeching lefties to help overcome objections to snooping on domestic protesters. <laughs> Same with the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, which scooped up many ideas for imposing federal speech codes on campuses that Republicans have been railing about for ages. That bill passed with 133 Democrats and 187 Republican yeas, establishing a model for future consensus. Yeah, the consensus is that we're the peons, they're the big, big guys on the block, and they can do whatever they want, and they don't have to pay attention to the Constitution one single bit. That's Republicans and Democrats, folks, both parties. It's not a party problem. It's a politician problem. And the only way we fix it is by electing politicians who will pay attention to the Constitution and by unelecting the ones that go to Washington, say they will, and then do not. The parties are now agreed. Both are okay with the federal government being all the way up in the public's business, using in as many levers as possible, so long as each side gets to pursue its own individual spying or suppression, on, or suppression fixations. Who said American politicians can't get along? They get along fine when it comes to, to uh, just completely ignoring the U.S. Constitution. Now, this third article that I have ought to raise a few eyebrows over there in Britain. The UK government used Army PSYOPs Division to monitor citizens and then lied about it. Did you hear that, my British viewers? Your government used your Army's PSYOPs Division to monitor citizens and then lied about it. I'm going to let you read that article, see what you think. It's not just Britain. It's all over the world. Every government is doing it. And it's because we're letting them, because we keep electing people that will okay it. We need to start electing people that will stand for freedom. The last article that I have today is titled, Truth Should Not Be a Casualty of War. And this one I found very interesting because I'm going to be frank with you. I have never believed that the Hamas casualty figures are accurate, particularly when it comes to how many civilians they claim have been killed. Now, according to the UN, the civilian deaths in Gaza is 50%, 50% lower than first reported. Millions have marched across the world demanding Israel and its, quote, genocide, unquote, in Gaza against, uh, I'm sorry, demanding Israel end its, quote, genocide, unquote, in Gaza, pointing to the number of civilians killed by the war. But the United Nations now concedes that this number provided by Hamas is wildly inaccurate. In a May 6 report, the UN said the death toll was 34,735, including 9,500 women and 14,500 children, or at least 24,000 civilians. But two days later, two days later, the UN quietly revised its figures, stating that 50% fewer civilians had died 
The total number of deaths is about the same at 34,844, but that number includes 4,959 women, not 9,500, and 7,797 children, not 14,500. A total of 12,756 civilians. And this from the United Nations, whose General Assembly adopted 15 resolutions on Israel in 2023, compared to seven for the rest of the world combined. This revision is the clearest sign yet that Hamas's statistics cannot be trusted. As David Adesnik, senior fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy, says, the UN should state clearly that it has lost confidence in sources whose credibility it has affirmed for months. So the next time you see somebody ranting about the civilian deaths in Gaza, point out to them that Hamas is lying by doubling the figure. Then see what they say. I bet they'll tell you you're wrong. And then what you can do next is you can say, well, that's not according to me. That's according to the United Nations. So take it up with them. <sighs> That's the news for today. As always, I pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you will be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he will do the same thing for every single person that you love. But I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.